Wow, thank you so much. This is an incredible honor for me. And I want to say congratulations to the class of 2023. It's an honor to have the opportunity to share this milestone moment with you today. But it is a weighty task to be asked to bestow some words of wisdom designed to inspire and guide you at this pivotal juncture in your life's journey. Family and friends are gathered to encourage and embrace you. There's a palpable energy of anticipation as you step from the comfort of this beautiful campus into the relative unknown. I'm also thrilled to return to campus to see President Nyer, the staff, students, and board members. I was honored to serve on Arcadia's board right before the pandemic, getting a glimpse into President Nyer's ambitious plans to elevate Arcadia's mission to be an inclusive, forward-thinking, liberal arts university tackling anti-black racism in all its manifestations. This growth is so evident from the time when my mother was a student here during the Beaver College days. So before I begin, I just want to invite each of you to close your eyes just for a moment and take a breath. Be fully present to connect with this very moment. You are here and now, and this moment will never be again. So here we go. Just close your eyes and take a breath. And this is what I want to talk about today, my journey to peace and presence. When I looked up the word Arcadia, it said a place of simple pleasure and quiet, harmony with nature. My interpretation of this is peace. So how do we navigate this life with all of its bumps, bruises, unknowns, and unseens to walk this path with grace, power, purpose, and peace, upright, strong, and emboldened? What I know is that change is the only constant. Buddhist philosophy says we have to make peace with impermanence. That is the journey, non-attachment, evolution, growth, transformation, surrender. My last several years have been hard, no two ways about it. I have encountered death, divorce, moving, and empty nesting, all while navigating the pandemic lockdown, starting a new business, and continuing to build a very demanding old one. <clears throat> Through it all, I am grateful to have been able to recognize what it feels like to thrive in the midst of unbelievable turbulence, grief, and dramatic change. My sister Claire was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer on September 11th, 2019. <clears throat> she was my best friend, confidant, and the brilliant corporate lawyer for our family business for over 30 years. She made her transition on May 31st, 2022. The intervening two and a half years were brutal. She went from a vibrant, cantankerous, funny, brilliant woman who spoke truth to power everywhere she went to someone who lost everything, her mobility, her vision, and eventually her physical life. I was in awe of her because throughout her horrific cancer battle, she remained optimistic, hopeful, and in her words, grateful. Gratitude has become my practice, my way of navigating the world. I'm committed to return over and over again to what's good in every situation. I ask myself, how am I learning, growing, cultivating, despite how things show up? This isn't always easy, and to be clear, I have not mastered it. Around the same time of Claire's diagnosis, my divorce proceedings began in earnest. After 27 years of marriage, three almost grown sons, we decided to call it quits. With him leading the charge, I took the unwinding of almost three decades of marriage with as much peace, presence, and equanimity as I could muster. My daily yoga and meditation practice grounded and supported me. We were both committed to a divorce devoid of acrimony, strife, and meanness. This is one of my greatest accomplishments, a peaceful divorce, a true anomaly. While I'm still processing both of these life-changing events, losing my two closest life companions at the same time, throughout it all, I have managed to find joy and purpose amidst this pain. They say you are never given more than you can bear. 
For me, it's been my career that has buoyed me throughout these massive life transitions. At the same time that my personal life was cratering, my professional life was exploding in the most positive ways. In 2020, just as the pandemic emerged, WURD Radio, the Black Talk radio station my family owns and I have been running since 2010, received a major grant that I had been working on for months. We literally received almost $200,000 in one lump sum to use for anything we needed one week after the lockdown. The timing was what I call divine. Just as we were starting to scramble to figure out how we would navigate this unprecedented shutdown, we got a financial windfall that allowed us some runway to figure out how to pivot. This allowed us not just to survive during the pandemic, but to grow, expanding our digital offerings, launching our first ever podcast, and deepening our two-way interactive talk radio programming, which served as a lifeline to our listeners, black Philadelphians who were hit the hardest by COVID-19. This has led us to where we are today. This year, we are celebrating our 20th anniversary, an awesome achievement. But going back to 2020, at the, thank you, at the height of the pandemic, opportunities continued to unfold for me. That summer, I was asked to co-lead the first Facebook Accelerator program focused on business sustainability for black and brown media companies. This was an incredible learning opportunity for me to be able to work with dozens of BIPOC media organizations to enhance their business performance. In 2021, I launched my second media company, co-founding URL Media with Mitra Kalita, a veteran media executive. When I reflect on the founding of URL and my partnership with Mitra, I know that this work acted as my sustenance during the pandemic, a time when we all were navigating deep isolation, fear, and uncertainty. Creating something new, vibrant, and exciting offered light and energy during some of my darkest, loneliest times. We conceptualized URL as a for-profit company that would help high-performing black and brown media organizations go from surviving to thriving. URL, which stands for Uplift, Respect, and Love, is a network of BIPOC-owned media organizations that share content, amplify each other's work, and share revenues. Only two years old, to our great satisfaction and surprise, we've been profitable since we started. We've grown from our inaugural eight members to a network of 20. We will have distributed over $500,000 to our network partners by the end of 2023 and have helped several of them, including WURD, recruit excellent talent to elevate their operations. As I reflect on all of these shifts that have shaped my life over the last several years, positive and negative, I recognize that I have arrived at a place where I am free free to explore opportunities and possibilities previously unavailable to me as a wife, mother, and caregiver. All of these experiences have conspired to get me to where I am right here, right now, receiving this amazing honorary doctorate today, heading to Stanford in September for a journalism fellowship, and continuing to nurture two dynamic media organizations. I am walking into my future with all of its uncertainty filled with strength, purpose, and gratitude. So I share my journey with you in hopes that you will know that as you walk into your future, whatever is thrown at you, you will survive and even thrive. So as I wrap up, I leave you with my prescription. I have a quote in my office that says, untethered from fear, everything is possible. Be fearless. Work hard, play hard. You must always seek balance in your life. Cultivate and honor your relationships and your commitments. They say life is short, but it can also be very long. The relationships you have made here at Arcadia will grow and mature as you do. You never know who will be your next boss or employee, so be kind and honorable in all your interactions. Take risks. In the words of Malcolm X, whose birthday it is today, Stumbling is not falling. Be present. Create a daily practice that cultivates mindfulness and allows your mind and body to rest. Limit social media and instead binge on human connectedness. 
Your thoughts and words have real power. Use them wisely. Travel. There's a big, beautiful world out there. Go out and see it. I know Arcadia has an amazing travel abroad program, so I'm sure many of you have already done this. Keep going. Practice gratitude. It's the antidote to misery. And finally, I leave you with one of my favorite readings. You may have heard this passage before. It's called Our Deepest Fear by Marianne Williamson. Our deepest for fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to let this, their light shine. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So Arcadia class of 2023, I wish all of you a future filled with peace, courage, kindness, and the strength to step boldly into a future of limitless possibilities. Thank you so much. Good luck and congratulations.